So I'm sitting here with Jose Carlos from an organization called uh, Sicanda, and uh, just start off by asking you what, what does your organization do? Uh, well, good afternoon. Um, Sicanda is uh, an organization based in Oaxaca, which mm -hmm. is a southern state in Mexico. Uh, we are a young organization that was created in 2009 and we work with uh, marginalized communities mm -hmm. uh, in southern Mexico. And what do, you, what do you do with these communities? Well, one of the communities we are working now with is uh, the Pepenadores, mm -hmm. which are uh, informal garbage pickers or scavengers in families who live at the dump, at the landfill. And they subsist by picking up uh, rubbish by, by hand and selling it. So their condition is, uh, is very degrading and they are exposed not only to severe poverty but also to accidents and uh, uh, their houses and are in a very high state of deterioration. Okay. So you hear a lot about organizations working with, with vulnerable people. How is Sikanda's approach different? Well, Sikanda tries to provide the communities with the tools and knowledge and abilities to transform the situation rather than just uh, giving specific uh, gifts or, 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 or specific things. We try to generate uh, a development that is, is transferred also from family to family. So what are, what, so what are some examples of, of the work you're doing? Um, for example, the people who live at the landfill they, they live in precarious housing in shelters made of uh, carton boxes and pieces of waste. Uh, Sikanda is training them on uh, how to build a decent house of about 22 square meters, uh, reusing 5,000 uh, Tetra Pak packages and almost 2,000 plastic bottles. It's a house that is built in six days, that is resistant, it's insulating, uh, but mostly is decent and is built by the families. Uh, these houses are, the cost of the houses are about one fourth of a conventional house, but they last up to 20 years. Wow, this is incredible. So it's, it's taking rubbish essentially or, or garbage and, and turning it into a home, which is, is fantastic on, on several levels. Is this something that could be spread? Is this an, you know, are there opportunities for this to be spread around the world? Yes, definitely. Uh, we have built already one house at the landfill mm -hmm. because these families have lived there for two generations. And it's showing the people that the waste and the, the rubbish that we throw every day can, uh, uh, can be uh, reused to build uh, proper housing. Uh, one of the conditions is that the families that acquire this technology that is very simple uh, they need to transfer that technology to another family. So this, uh, the access to this technology is costless. The only thing is that they, they need to create uh, a link with another family. Mm -hmm. That's where solidarity comes uh, in, the, in the context. So in five or 10 years time, what do you envisage uh, Sikanda doing? Is, is it gonna be a, a huge organization? Are there gonna be thousands of people around the world with these houses? Uh, hopefully we will be uh, able to reach more people who live in, uh, in, at slums uh -huh. or who have precarious housing. Yes, this is an affordable type of housing uh, that can be learned easily by families. Uh -huh. And it is very sad, but most of the technologies that are around are very easy to learn, but it doesn't reach out to the poor people. Uh -huh. And we're trying to, uh, to make that bridge. Uh, we are going to build 12 more houses in 2010 with the help of, uh, of other foundations, with the help of the people who want to invest in this type of project. Mm -hmm. uh, and mostly what you are doing is uh, investing in the knowledge of people that are going to transform this situation. And these houses are, are made out of, uh, of garbage that we throw away routinely in, in rich countries. I imagine it's going to be very hard for our viewers to imagine what they might be like. Could you describe them a little bit? Well, it has a structure made of wood. It's a, it's a, a certified wood, so it doesn't come from a, a clandestine timber space. And uh, the, 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 the wood frame, then it's covered with uh, the Tetra Pak packages. Mm -hmm. In between, like a sandwich, mm -hmm. there is uh, the plastic bottle, but it's empty. That creates an insulating uh, cushion system. Mm -hmm. Then it's covered all with uh, with a uh, metal nets, like the ones used for for chicken or hens to keep uh, the chicken. 
and you put some plaster, about one inch of plaster, cement, just to give the, the appearance of a conventional house. Then you have a roof that is made of uh, insulating materials and a water collection system so that they can also collect uh, rainwater. Mm, this house is built in about a week and it looks like a normal house. Mm -hmm. It's resistant, it has the, the house we have built resist, resisted already two earthquakes, resisted a monsoon in, uh, in southern Mexico and it's still there. Oh, that's quite impressive. Well, perhaps it will give our viewers pause to thought next time they're throwing away their Tetra packaging and, and their bottles. Um, Jose Carlos, it's been fantastic to, to speak to you and uh, it's easy to get distracted when we're at talks like this about the policy and, and, and all of the, the, the depressing news that so often comes out of these conferences and it's great to hear about you know, practical solutions happening on the ground and, and real stories from, from people who are, uh, are putting this in place. So thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for uh, the opportunity.